you can get just as much work out of a five pound dumbbell as you can a 50 pound or a 100 pound dumbbell. You just gotta change the way you do use that dumbbell. Good morning. Welcome back, good to see you again. It's a, uh, it's a nice day here in the gym. It is really cruddy outside, cold and rainy, but it's warmer than it has been. It's actually about 50 degrees outside right now, which is pretty awesome. In the gym already, it's about 60 degrees. So I have a feeling today we're gonna be losing, you know, one, maybe even two of these long sleeve shirts that we're wearing and enjoying a little bit of the tank top. We'll see. Who knows how much we're gonna start sweating in here today. But uh, it's definitely nice to know that it's gonna be a little bit warmer than it has been in the last couple of weeks and a little bit more comfortable too, overall. Cruddy outside, but we'll take it in here because it means it's gonna be a lot better of a workout just from a comfort standpoint. Regardless though, it's a workout, it's gonna be good, and we've got a pool workout ahead of us today, back and biceps. We're gonna be hammering them pretty hard, uh, really hammering home the rear delts and the traps especially here today, but we're gonna go pretty hard on just about everything. We're gonna start with some cable movements here on the cable pull down, doing some lat cable pull downs before we move on to some more dumbbell exercises and free weight exercises. Pumped for this workout, excited to see where it takes us. I think we're actually gonna get the sweat on today, which is gonna be great. So let's get right after it. Some good warm up here. All right, time for the first set. All right, so same cues really as last week here. We are doing our best to try to pull our elbows down and back. So we're almost aiming them at the ground, so to speak. The back of our elbow here, you know, trying to get it into the ground behind us over here. If we can do that, we're gonna be in a really good spot to really engage those lats in the mid back, which is everything we wanna be targeting right now, especially for our first exercise. Number two. Ah, same way here. Yeah. for some hyper extensions here. Weighted, We're going to 45 pounds. Ugh. Oh. These are an exercise that for a really long time, they, they felt simple to figure out, but I don't know that I was very easily able to understand the why behind them. When I first started lifting, I had numerous problems with really probably what it boiled down to not keeping a nice neutral back in a lot of these major lifts, namely the squat and the deadlift. I ended up compressing a disc, 
twice in 18 months or so. Uh, the first time, maybe, maybe even less than that, honestly. It could have been about 6 to 12 months. The first time, I, I didn't really know what it was. It just hurt really bad. And, you know, I would stop lifting and, and doing those back exercises, and it would go away. So I was like, all right, well, what the heck was that? And that took time, like at least three months, two months. And then I felt good, and I'm like, mm, okay, I'm ready to go again. And I literally did it again. <laughs> did the exact same thing again. So the second time it happened, I was, I was so frustrated. And I remember doing a lot of research to understand, like, should I even be doing a deadlift? Is it even worth it? And in reality, from a bodybuilding perspective, you don't need to be deadlifting. It's not a critical exercise for bodybuilding. For strength training, it is. Very much so. It's very important. And for a long while there, I literally cut it out from my, uh, my complete training plan for like a really long time. And because of that, I was able to really fully heal and recover. But when I started back into it, and that was at least a year after the second incident, I started all the way back at zero. Literally, that's with a bar. Videotaping myself, making sure I was keeping that neutral back. And I was progressing fairly quickly up front. But I certainly wasn't getting up to the probably even two plate deadlift for a while there until I felt like I was good, controlled, and comfortable. And I had a very, very, very large weak point in my lower back during that time. So it took some time to build it up. And this was one of the exercises that helped me do it, along with things like good mornings. Great exercises for that mid-lower back. So let's keep working it. We are getting these bad boys keyed up for 80 pounds each, these dumbbells. Last week we did 85, and it was just a little bit too much. The reps, uh, they didn't get finished completely by the end, and even actually by the second set, if I remember correctly, I'd have to look at the book, but if I remember correctly, even the second set was a little short on the reps. So this week, we're going five total pounds lighter on each dumbbell, so just 80 pounds. And that should give us enough to really be able to finish these out without, you know, losing all of our momentum, basically. All right. Let's do some rows, huh? always nice when it finally starts to warm up a little bit but same time it's like man it's barely the end of January here and we're getting 50 degree weather already when I was a kid it was I feel like a lot colder and snowier longer into the year now granted I grew up far north of here but I still feel like it was colder for a lot longer than it is anymore it seems like it gets cold for like actually a month and then it's back to ugly gray rainy weather for at least three months it's supposed to get up to be like 55 today or so and if that's the case heck we might even crack a window or two who knows <laughs> you got to take what you can get when you got stuff like this we're not giving anything for free it's all earned and uh, if i can find a little bit of happiness in a cracked window and a slight breeze 
I definitely will. All right, set number two. Let's hit it. Oh, very nice. One of the key differentiators, I believe, from a newbie lifter to a, I'll call it moderately experienced lifter. I don't want to call them experienced yet. You know, I think there's, there's a couple layers to that. But the difference between that newbie lifter and that moderately experienced lifter, or at least one of the differences, is that the moderately experienced lifter is going to be so much more able to understand when they've got to lower that weight down a little bit one week versus just pushing through it. Now, I will say this too. I don't think that's the sole identifier or even necessarily an identifier every time of a moderately experienced lifter. A lot of individuals ne never get to that level of self-awareness, but I would wager that the bulk of them don't even exhibit that for a longer period of time till they're closer to that experienced lifter level. The newbie lifters, they're just trying to figure out their form, how to do these things, establish a baseline of strength, I mean, it's once you have that baseline of strength that you might not be increasing the weight every single week, but you still want to. Your ego is telling you you still want to. But in reality, what we have to do is actually moderate ourselves and say, look, last week, 85 was too much, man. I looked at the notebook. I wrote some notes down last week, and it's looking like it was just too much. So we've got to lower it a little bit this week. The newer lifter would probably never lower that weight down. They'd be like, no, I'm just, I've, I've been getting stronger, you know, literally week by week. I can do this. I'll be all right. And they might do that three weeks in a row or more, and never actually get better at it, never get bigger. They'll get bigger, but is it as optimized as possible? Probably not. So don't be afraid to lower that weight down. I'm not saying drop it all the way down just to make it easy, but if you're not able to hit it with the form, the ROM and control that you want, lower it down, lower it down, take it easy. You can get just as much work out of a five pound dumbbell as you can a 50 pound or a hundred pound dumbbell. You just gotta change the way you do use that dumbbell. That's all. Third and final set here. Oh. All right, got ourselves a 30 pound dumbbell here and uh, it's time for some concentration curls. We're gonna be letting these guys hang low, hang all the way down before we pull it back up. Now, uh, typically I would use the Bowflex for these. I've said this before though, my only real complaint with the Bowflex and they're great weights otherwise, but my only real complaint, and this is a, honestly a big hindrance, is the fact that no matter what, weight you have them set to, they are, you know, this long-ish. They're always going to be this long. That's like 50% bigger than what this dumbbell is. And for some of these exercises, I find that it really gets in the way of getting in that good quality rep that we're looking for. With this being tight quarters between your legs, between your knees here, it can get in the way. So let's just eliminate it entirely. Set up the dumbbell here. It's super simple. It's taking it all the way down to just one 10-pound uh, plate on each side, basically. And we've We've got our stuff here. Okay, let's get after it. We're gonna crank out some reps here, about 12 or so, and really just pull them home, man. Pull it home. Doing four sets. Okay.
Okay. Good. We can do more though, and now I'm trying to determine how much more. Let's just do 35, huh? And we do have the weights to make our magnet weights, and I'm actually prepping them, started prepping them a couple days ago. I need to find some time to actually work on them. I am attempting to strip off all the paint that's on them currently. I'm looking through the, uh, what's it called, plastic wrap that I have them surrounded in, and I'm not certain that it worked on the weights. I'm not sure why it wouldn't work, but we'll see. If it didn't strip it though, um, it's okay. What we're still gonna do is put it in through some rust inhibitor. We're gonna put it into, I'm sorry, a rust removal solution. Let it do the rust removal before we actually start grinding on it and then epoxy down those magnet weights that I was talking about. All right, set number two here. This should be a little bit better. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, much better. Wow, okay. Just such a small difference, but it making a such a small weight difference, but it's making a huge difference here in our amount of effort we need. Okay, I like that weight. We're gonna keep it there. Whew. It's getting warm though. It's getting really warm. Okay, third set here. Still got two more. Grip there. Okay. Yeah, okay. We're going to be taking it down for that last set there. Take it down to 30. A little bit longer rest, 30 extra seconds on the rest. And we'll take the dumbbell weight down to 30 pounds so we can get the full benefit out of this last set. I'm worried that if we don't take it down, we're not going to get really that many reps at all. I had to help myself on, you know, at least the last two reps on both sides there. And I'm okay with that, but I don't want us to have to do that for you know, more than half of our reps or even half. I'd like to only have to do it for the last three, maybe four, if I need to do it at all. So by reducing the weight down here, we can uh, cut some of that out. We probably should reduce this weight down even further, but honestly, being a little bit lazy here, I don't want to go get another set of fives, take the tens off, put fives on there with the uh, two and a halves. That's all right. We'll be good with just this. Final set. Let's do it. It's going to be a tough one, but it's going to be good. Come on. Oh man, we had so much momentum until like that tenth rep. Woof. All right, here we go. All right, not horrible, but I'm not, honestly, to be totally transparent, I'm not very happy with overall how that went, at least 
from my personal performance perspective, I feel like I was really swinging that weight like on most of those reps versus, you know, taking those slow, controlled, deliberate moves, kind of pausing for half a microsecond at the bottom there before we let it come back up versus using that momentum to kind of just let it swing back and forth, back and forth. Uh, so I'm going to write myself a note here to remind myself next week to be cognizant of that. And then uh, we're going to put this away and move over here. We've got some face pulls and shrugs that we're going to superset. It's going to be a brutal, awesome superset. We'll see you there. All right, let's do this. We've got uh, the Vulcan strap again lined up here for these face pulls. Um, going to be trying both the handles. We're going to try the long and the short handles, see if you know one of them makes any difference in the face pull. For those of you who might not remember or didn't see, we got the strap in last week from Amazon for like really cheap, like 12 bucks. Um, really, really nice quality. Like it doesn't feel cheap. The only thing that might be a little bit lacking is the padding. It's there. It's just very thin. But for the types of exercise you're going to be doing in Swiss, I mean, you don't need a, you don't really need padding anyway. So it's got um, two straps here. You can see kind of an inner loop and then this longer outer loop. Uh, we're going to start with the outer loop. See how that is for the face pulls. We're just comparing it essentially to our, our rope that we typically use. I really like that actually for face pulls. This was really nice for uh, tricep pushdowns. So if you, if you are looking for an accessory for that, I would recommend this. I certainly, I think I liked this better than the rope for my tricep pushdowns, but uh, it doesn't really compare to the rotating handles. I love those things for tricep work. But for face pulls, I love the rope. Uh, I really like having the, the grip at the end there to kind of chalk your hand up against, make sure it doesn't slip out of the way. So we'll see how this feels. We're going to have to take a different grip for those face pulls because there's no ball on the end of this. So it's going to be a little bit different overall. That's okay. We'll see how it moves. We've also got some shrugs lined up here. I have these uh, you know, little grip handles here that let us get into more of a neutral position that we'll be using as well and uh, giving it a go. I was going to rig up the hex bar for these, but I was like, you know what? Let's just throw these uh, easy grip handles on there. Get a bit of a neutral grip in there with these shrugs and really shrug up some, uh, some heavier weight here. So let's get after it. Good little superset here. I think I might like that more. Huh. Okay. Let's do some shrugs now, right into them. <sighs> All right, I like that. I want a bit of a more of a hold on this though. So we'll see what we need to do. We might just need to chalk our hands up a little bit. These are a little, little slick here. Number two here, I, I liked this wide grip. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go on the inner grip here, the shorter grip, but I don't know. I really like that wide grip. It seemed like the perfect width there. It's really nice. Dude, I really like this, this attachment for these, man. Okay, let's try some of these again. Let's see if we can get better grip this time. Much better. Reduced the weight just a little bit there, and uh, I, I definitely got a better grip overall, so <sighs> really liking that. This strap, I am loving for face pulls. I really like the difference in kind of having that like overhand grip pulling it towards my face. I'm not sure if the same could be done with the rotate handles, but man, these are working out perfectly, and these are, again, very cheap accessories you can find on Amazon for like, I think it was about 15 bucks. I'll put a little screenshot up here for you to see. Okay, another set here. 
Let's see the wide handles again. Let's give those another go. Last count there, I don't really know. I think that was at least 15. We'll see. <laughs> you guys be the judge. Here we go. Lastly, but not leastly set here. You know, I don't think there's a big difference between the inner or the outer grips on this. I'm still, there's a lot of room up here on the uh, separation. So with the short grips, you know, normally if they were too short, you probably wouldn't get as much, get as wide with it. But with these, since it's so long, the uh, short versus the long side, for the face pulls at least, not make a big of a difference for me. That's all right. It's good to change it up anyway. Last one. <sighs> Very good. All right. We got some ab work still to do. We're going to go hit that and uh, close this workout out. So thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us again. It's good to see you again once more. Hope you have a good day ahead of you and uh, you're crushing all your goals. You're hitting all the things that you know you gotta hit. Maybe you don't wanna do them sometimes. I get it, I do. Maybe you're enjoying the hell out of it. That's awesome. I'm rooting for you, keep that up. Cherish that, don't forget that feeling. But if you're struggling as we are, much more apt to do a bit more often. Just don't forget, what was dark can be light again. The grass can be greener. You'll get there. Keep it up, I believe in you. I'll see you next time. I'm gonna put this away and destroy my abs so I can enjoy this trip in Mexico in a couple weeks. I'll see you next time.